When I was a kid, my dad used to take me fishing. And I remember the day that I caught the biggest fish you have ever seen. I remember the day well. Dad and I headed to the lake, pulling his boat behind the truck. We stopped at the store and stocked up on essentials like canned Vienna sausages, Snickers bars, and night crawlers. It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, the sky was filled with big, white, fluffy clouds. We put the boat into the water and Dad navigated to one of his favorite spots. Fishing can be fun if the fish are biting, but for a kid, if they're not biting, it can get kind of boring. And well, the fish just weren't biting that day, and so after a couple of hours, I'd eaten all the Vienna sausages and the Snickers bars, and I said, Dad, let's go home. But he convinced me to cast my line out just one more time. And all of a sudden, a fish hit my line so hard that it nearly jerked that fishing pole right out of my hands. Set the hook, set the hook, my dad screamed, and I jerked that pole so hard that it bent backwards. That fish was so strong that the end of my pole was bending over. In just a moment, my dad was right beside me and we were fighting Moby Dick, I'm telling you. It was like battling him all the way in and it took us an hour to get that fish into the boat. When we finally got that fish into the boat, it was so big it nearly sank the boat. It was huge. Now, I would show you a photo, but see, this is what happened. My dad had the camera, and he asked me if I could hold that fish up for a photo op, and it took all my strength to lift that thing up with two arms. And just as dad was about to snap the photograph, that fish looked up at me, and I tell you, he grinned. And then he jumped right out of my arms and into the water. It was the one that got away. The Gospel of Luke tells us that very early in the morning, the women came to the tomb where Jesus' body had been placed. But when they got there, the entrance stone was rolled away and Jesus' body was gone. Two men with light cascading over them appeared to the women and said, why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He is not here. He has been raised up. But well, wasting no time, the women ran back and broke the news to the disciples. But the disciples didn't believe them. As verse 11 says, these words seem to them an idle tale. The disciples thought they were making it all up. It was just a tall tale kind of like my fishing story. Sometimes, stories are just too outlandish to be taken seriously. One dominant theme in the gospel, accounts of Jesus' resurrection, is that no one, no one expects Jesus to rise from the dead. Even though Jesus predicts his death and the resurrection, over and over to the disciples. No one expects it. No one says, I knew it. I knew this was going to happen. This is what Jesus told us would happen. Nobody shouts, hallelujah, or praise God when they hear that Jesus has risen from the dead because nobody expects it. And the truth is, at least at first, nobody believes it either. The women came to the tomb expecting to find Jesus' dead body. They had spent hours getting the spices and the ointments ready to anoint Jesus' body for burial. Walking to the tomb, they have no expectation that Jesus is alive. Verse 4 says, When they find the stone rolled away and the tomb empty, they are puzzled. Is this the right tomb? they say to one another. They had been there Friday afternoon and watched Joseph of Arimathea place Jesus' body in it. This has to be the right place. While they are 
looking around, scratching their heads. Suddenly, two men are standing in front of them, light cascading from their clothes. They have to be angels. It's only when the two angels remind them of the promise that Jesus made that he would be resurrected that they finally remember. They remember, but still not in their wildest dreams did they expect this. When they run back to tell the rest of the disciples, how did the disciples react to the news that Jesus is alive? Well, they're overcome with joy and celebration. Well, no. As the gospel says, the disciples regard their message as an idle tale. Idle tale is kind of a nice translation of the Greek word liros. Liros is the root word for the English word delirious. So the disciples really think the women are kind of off their rocker, right? Crazy, just a fishing tale. And frankly, who can blame them? We all know people don't come back from the dead, right? It's against the natural order of things, which is why, as one preacher puts it, if you don't find the resurrection at least a little hard to believe, you probably aren't taking it very seriously. Maybe the disciples find it so hard to believe at first because the implications are so vast. God does something totally new, totally unexpected. When God raises Jesus from the dead, God opens up a whole new reality. The disciples have to rethink Jesus' entire life, his ministry in light of the resurrection. It's a whole new world. Luke tells us that Peter gets up and runs to the tomb. He stoops and looks inside and he is stunned. He's amazed at what has happened. Wonder and mystery permeates the story of the resurrection. Awe and reverence. They don't yet know what to make of these events, what to believe about Jesus or the resurrection. For most of the disciples, resurrection fate came about slowly. What about you, I wonder? How did your fate come about? Was it slowly over time, or did you believe it from the moment you heard it? Well, unique to the Gospel of Luke is the story of the road to Emmaus. It happens in Luke chapter 24, right after Peter walks away from the tomb amazed. That same day, Luke tells us, two of Jesus' followers are walking the road to Emmaus. They're walking along, and they are deep in conversation about everything that has happened. And all of a sudden, Jesus just comes up beside them. He's walking along with them. They don't recognize Jesus at first, but they're discussing their sadness over the crucifixion with him. When they get to their destination, they persuade Jesus come in, come and eat with us. Jesus sits down at the table with them. They still don't know who he is. But just as he had done the night before he was crucified, he takes bread and he breaks it and he blesses it and he gives it to them. And then their eyes are opened and they recognize him. They know this is Jesus and that he is risen from the dead. They no longer view it as an idle tale. He is risen indeed. And then Jesus vanishes. The two disciples think back over their conversation with Jesus and they say to one another, were not our hearts burning within us as he was talking to us on the road. During this Lenten season, the season up until Easter, our theme was the way. We used the metaphor of pilgrimage or path to describe the Christian life. 
you'll see our path here that we've been thinking about this entire season. A pilgrimage is a journey of spiritual significance taken to deepen one's faith. It's discipleship that happens on the road, on the journey with Jesus. Well, I think resurrection faith is what happens when we live life on the road with Jesus. As we give our lives over to Christ, we commit to walk through life with him. And it's along the way that we begin to understand who Jesus really is. We begin to get this deep sense that Christ walks with us and we too feel our hearts burn within us just as the disciples did on the road to Emmaus we live out our faith day by day and in the walking in the breaking of bread and in the communion with other disciples we believe resurrection faith happens slowly for the disciples but finally they begin to understand that Jesus is God's son the righteous one sent into the world to live in solidarity with humanity they begin to comprehend that when he is risen that death has been defeated that brokenness no longer has hold over them they begin to understand that they can live in eternity with Christ and that eternity begins here and now as we walk with Christ by our side we begin we come to understand and believe all those things too resurrection faith happens slowly for most of the disciples but when it happens it changes everything Will you pray with me? Risen Christ, we are so grateful that on that Easter morning so long ago, that when the disciples went to the tomb, you were no longer there. God, we give you thanks for Jesus. We thank you, God, that you sent your own son, your very self, to live and move and be among us, that we might know you and love you more. God, we thank you so much for Easter morning and for all that it means to all of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.